I'm a singer. I'm an artist. I'm a journalist. A businesswoman. An educator. A sister. A grandmother. An advocate. A leader. I am a friend. I am. 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 I am one of the many people living with HIV in the U.S. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. HIV together. Together. Get tested. Get involved. Go to www.actagainstaids.org for more information. I'm Deborah James with Healthcare 411. Information for better health. Our kidneys work to filter waste from our bloodstream and to regulate our blood pressure. Some patients may develop early stage chronic kidney disease without even knowing it, but left untreated. The condition may get worse over time until your kidneys no longer work. Here to discuss chronic kidney disease along with a free brochure that includes information about With the Christian view. And special guests. Yes, you ought to obey your parents, children. Crying for love. That's Kay Robinson. Uh, Down came the rain is the rain is name of the project. Crying for love is the song, and it features artists called Ordinary. 
We do thank God for you all tuning into the broadcast. You are tuning into Guts. Guts being not to say a variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm your host, Nikki V. And we thank you so much for tuning into the broadcast and being a part of what God is doing right here and right now. Well, news you can use, some I found interesting, maybe you will as well. Arizona expands ban denying driver's license to immigrants. Yes, Arizona in the news, once again, with immigrants. Now, for those of you who like the reform that they have going on, this is probably going to be very important to you. You're going to be like, we should do that here in Florida. And for those of you who are not really interested in what Arizona is doing because you think that they are being over the top, really, well, you're going to say, oh my goodness, there, there they go, Arizona, once again, being just a little bit ridiculous. All right, Arizona expands ban denying driver's license to immigrants. Arizona, long at odds with President Barack Obama's administration over immigration reforms, is expanding a ban on giving driver's license to illegal immigrants to include all of those who have been granted relief from deportation in a move that rights advocates criticize as vindictive. The state Republican governor, Jan Brewer, announced a year ago that Arizona would deny licenses to young illegal immigrants granted a deportation reprieve under a federal program approved as Obama pushed for a broader immigration overhaul. We were argued at the time that deferral of deportation did not give the immigrants lawful status or entitle them to public benefits such as driver's license. The expansion of Arizona's bar on licenses was announced in a document filed with the U.S. District Court in Phoenix on Tuesday by lawyers for brewers and two state transportation department officials embroiled in a lawsuit over the issue. According to the American Civil Liberties Union of Arizona, one of the groups that brought the original lawsuit, the expansion would deny licenses to immigrants who have been allowed by federal government to remain in the country for humanitarian reasons. They include survivors of domestic violence and victims of human trafficking and sexual exploitation. This is a vindictive policy change that is motivated by politics and brewers' desire to get out from under a lawsuit. Alexandra Soler executive director of the ACLU of Arizona said in a statement. It only reflects her continuing animus and her irrational desire to punish even more lawfully present immigrants by denying them the licenses that they need to get to work in school, including abused women and their children. Brewer, whose office referred comment to the state transportation department, has taken a tough stance on illegal immigration in 2010. She signed the state law requiring police to question people that they stop and suspect of being in the country illegally about their immigration status. And so we thank God for you all who are tuned into the broadcast. We hope that you continue to tune in. And we hope that you will continue to pray for what's going on in the world around us and how we are dealing with things within our purview. Officials in at least 45 U.S. states have confirmed that recipients of deportation relief under that program are eligible for licenses or have been issuing licenses to people in that group according to the National Immigration Law Center. So this is definitely something that is a pet peeve for Governor Brewer. Looks like we have an update from Harvest Reapers International School of Ministry. Thank you. 
Brian Poppin song called I Can Make It right here on Guts Gospel United Save a Variety Talk Show from the Christian point of view hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm your host Nikki V and we thank you so much for tuning into the broadcast and being a part of what God is doing right here and right now. God is able and he will carry you through. I want to let you know uh, we're in our series and we were talking about and we are talking about an everlasting covenant and we're in Genesis chapter no, 9, verses 18, uh, 17, I'll do verses 8 through 11 right now, and we'll uh, return back and talk about winning and how to teach, but we wanted to kind of delve a little bit into this everlasting covenant and remind us that the believer can be assured of God's protection in the future. God is not slack concerning his promise. Now, in verse 8 it says, And God spake unto Noah and said unto his sons with him, saying, and I, behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there be any more, neither shall there any more be flood to destroy the earth. Now God promised to Noah, his sons, their descendants, and everything living that there would never be a flood to destroy all mankind. God had drowned the world once, and though he foresaw the future wickedness of it, he promised that he would never do it again. If the following or the flowing of the tides uh, should last for several days instead of just a few hours each day. What desolation that would cause and how destructive would the clouds be if such showers as we have sometimes seen were continued for days or weeks at a time. But God shows what he could do in wrath and yet reveals what he will do in mercy. Many of these floods that we've seen, even in the past few days, where uh, roads have been destroyed and everything else. Now, it didn't destroy the whole earth. It just destroyed that little section. Had God not kept his promise of future protection, we might have seen a dramatically different outcome. In establishing his covenant with Noah, God made the covenant both universal and unconditional. Noah was not asked to do anything in order for the covenant to remain in force. By including every living creature in the covenant, we are reminded of God's instruction to Adam and Eve to reproduce and multiply and cover the earth. Here God promised that water will never again be the cause of the destruction of all mankind or even the earth. With whom did God make the covenant? God made a covenant with Noah, his descendants, and all the animals Noah brought with him. Everybody was included. An everlasting covenant, one that is not contingent upon you, me, or anybody else. It is simply God who said, I will, and he shall. It's a universal covenant. And establishing his covenant with Noah, God made the covenant both universal and unconditional. Noah was not asked to do anything in order for the covenant to remain in force. By including every living creature in the covenant, we are reminded of God's instructions to Adam and Eve to reproduce and multiply and cover the earth. Here God promised that water will never again be the cause for the destruction of all mankind or the earth. Now this is God's assurance and we continue on in Genesis chapter 9 verses 12 through 17. God assures us of his promise. He created uh, the rainbow. Told you about that, and I told you about the fact that uh, the gay activists have determined to take the rainbow and use it, and, and they have done a very good job marketing-wise, because many people, when you see the rainbow, do not think of the covenant or the promise or the everlasting covenant that God made with man, but they think about homosexuality, and they think of homosexual agenda, and they think of it as a symbol of homosexuality and we need to take back the symbol that God has given unto us as a promise 
that he would keep with us as a sign between all of us that his promise is true that he would not destroy the world again by flood. It shall be seen in the cloud, so that seeing shall be the token of the covenant. God did not need a reminder. He gave the rainbow for the sake of his people. As God looks upon the bow, he remembers the covenant, and so should we, that we also may be ever mindful of the covenant with faith and thankfulness. When we see a rainbow, we should be reminded of the covenant. Now, from a sexuality. The rainbow is one of those natural wonders that leave us speechless when it appears in the sky. Almost out of nowhere, it is literally a reflection of light on water droplets that causes the phenomenon. But it should also cause a phenomenon in our hearts. Our hearts should be warmed with, when we see this reminder of God's grace in the sky. It's a promise sealed in a multicolored bow across the sky. The rainbow also delivers another message to us. That the storm is over. The flooding in our lives have subsided. We are safe now. It pictures the greatest instrument of God's grace in the cross of Christ. In it, God took the storms, floods, and rains in our lives and placed it on his son so that the Prince of Peace could bring us peace that we might be able to be established in every good one. Ah, the sign of the covenant on the rainbow. It's something greater, grander, and better than anything you could possibly imagine. I do want to remind you, though, on Friday, September 20th, Lighthouse Worship Center Church of God in Christ will be with Fort Lauderdale Multicultural Church of God in Christ and the minister's wives are in charge of this pre-appreciation celebration and it begins at 7.30 p.m. Also on Sunday, September 22nd at 5 p.m., we will have the men in charge and it is another pre-appreciation celebration at uh, Fort Lauderdale Multicultural Church of God in Christ and the visiting church will be A.M. Cohen Temple where Bishop Jacob Cohen is the Pastor, this is all going on at 744 Northwest 12th Avenue in the city of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where the senior pastor is Pastor Roger A. Grimes, and he is the superintendent of the Solid Rock District, and we do thank God for the pastor and superintendent, Roger A. Grimes. I want to also remind you, Moving Hands of God Ministry presents Community Health Fair, September 28th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. 1609 South State Road 7, North Fort, North Lauderdale, Florida, 33068. The number to call for more information, 954-200-2991. That's 954-200-2991. 954-200-2991. Or you can call 954-300-5275. That's 954-300-5275. Now, Genesis chapter 9, verses 12 through 17, and it says, And God said, This is the token of covenant which I take make between me and you, every living creature that is with me, perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. I will remember my covenant which is between me and and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. So that Noah would know his word is good. God gave a token or a sign. He gave a token or a sign, a symbol, something to remind us what's going on. And uh, meaning a distinguishing mark or a miraculous sign. This sign is the bow or the kesbeth. This bow is a usual instrument of the Hebrew word. It is a bow of war. But here he gives this bow a new and a new meaning. The bow is, or rainbow will be a reminder of his covenant with Noah and the earth never again to destroy it with water. It is noteworthy that nothing happens outside of God's permissive will. God brought the cloud and determined that 
the rainbow would be seen in that cloud. God will see it, but man will be permitted to witness the rainbow as well. Each time we see a rainbow, we are to be reminded that God has made a covenant to never again destroy the earth with great flood. That's what we ought to be thinking of in the rainbow, the covenant that God made with the earth. The rainbow usually appears when particles of moisture in a cloud interact with the rays of the sun, usually after the storm. It is comforting to know that the storm of God's wrath that once resulted in a universal flood will always be quieted when he looks upon the token of peace that is the rainbow. Once more, God's covenant is confirmed. That is the seventh time God stated it. He will not forget. It is the completeness of God's promise. Noah and all mankind can be assured that God is in control and mindful of all that is occurring on the earth. So the question is, what is the purpose of the rainbow in the cloud? And that is the rainbow in the clouds is to serve as a reminder of God's covenant with mankind. God is not slack concerning his promise, and we should remember that he is who he said he is. It uh, looks like we have a uh, caller, and it uh, looks like it may be an update from Harvest Reapers International School of Ministry, and we're welcoming our caller at this time. Seeing family, friends, fall victims to gang violence, drugs, it definitely made me want to serve. 